Hey, this is Ryan Jones from Serverless Guru. In this video, we're going to be looking at something called API Gateway. So API Gateway was this, this piece here that communicates between the front end and our back end. So let's go ahead and search for API Gateway, and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. So API Gateway is going to connect to the Lambda function that we just created called Create User. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic API. Uh, we're going to get past this splash screen here and jump straight in. So we're going to say that we're doing a REST API. It looks like they support WebSocket now um, as like a, in just directly in the, in the browser like this. So that's, or in the console, uh, that's new. And then we're going to go to create a new API and we're going to call this uh, user, let's call it user API. And then just say user API. We can call it regional, that's fine for our endpoint type. And then what that's going to do is it's going to create a user API here. So if we go back to APIs, we can see we have one API called user API. And then we have resources. So we're going to create a new path. So you say create resource. And we're going to call this create user. You can see there that the resource path is create user. I actually prefer to have uppercase. So I'm just going to do that instead. And then enable API Gateway cores. We're going to say yes. So once this is created, we're going to click onto this create user resource and we're going to say create method. So we're going to create a post. And then inside this post, you can click around. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of delay on mine. Sorry about that. There we go. So we're going to click Lambda function here. We're going to scroll down to Lambda function. And let's go ahead and switch back to our Lambda function view. We see this create user listed here. So there's this thing called an ARN. It's basically a location. So you can think about it like your home address, right? So if you told me to come over to your house for a party, you would give me the home address. I would then know where to go. I could type it in my Google Maps. Same thing for everything on AWS. Everything has a, oh, that was weird. Everything has a, uh, an ARN attached. So for instance, this dropdown just allowed us to connect it directly. So that's kind of the, you know, the integrations that AWS already has. And then we can hit save. So now what's going to happen is that when a post request happens to our API, it's then going to contact our Lambda function and then execute this code. So now what we can do is we can jump over to uh, this test and we're going to have a request body here and we're just going to say um, E1 is error. So this is not initially going to work. And um, we'll be able to see that here. So it said, oh no, status code. Um, but what we should see is we should go back to Lambda. Um, we're going to search for, this is when we want to start getting into CloudWatch. So as we were with the API gateway section, you can see logs here. So imagine trying to debug by looking at this. It's a, you know, that's a nightmare. Um, this is a mix of like API gateway logs and, uh, you know, like some Lambda like response. So we want to just look at what happened with the Lambda function. So we'll go back down to logs. We'll go to create user. We'll click the most recent events. And then we'll be able to see that we got a key one of error and we have the status code back. So what that's telling me is that this request body is actually being picked up properly inside the Lambda function. Let's try to switch this and see what happens. Instead of key one error, let's say key one success. So we get back status code, body, everything is groovy. That's awesome. And let's do a random one, X, Y, Z. Yeah, I didn't know how to handle it. So what we should do is let's go back to the Lambda function and we'll add something here, an else statement that has a response. We'll say like 400, say 
Um, not sure what you want. Let's save it. And then immediately we can switch back to the API Gateway console and test this. So let's hit XYZ again and test. And then there we go. That's the, that's the power of what we just did here. So we've just basically created this whole section. Um, we've created this whole section here with API Gateway, Lambda, and CloudWatch monitoring. Um, so let's go ahead, let's draw an, a thing here actually. So let's, let's do um, text down here that says CloudWatch, monitoring, and logging. And then let's connect this. Let's see if we can do a dotted border. That's not good. There we go. And then we'll put uh, kind of a, a line here. There we go. CloudWatch monitoring and logging. So both of these have CloudWatch monitoring and logging. Um, and from this view, you should be able to see that API Gateway is logging, Lambda function is logging. Um, I'm actually going to take that out because I don't actually like the way that looks. But this is something to understand from a high level, like what's happening. Uh, and with that, I'm going to stop the video. I think this is a good place to just like understand a very basic view of like what API Gateway is. Is we've just created this create user. Um, you know what? Let's take it one step further real quick. Um, let's go Postman. Postman's an application for testing APIs. I can get it to open. Right. Postman. So this is how quick we can do this. So we'll hit actions. We'll say deploy API. We'll give it a new stage. We're going to call this stage prod production API. Then we'll give it a deployment description called production API. Deploy it. And now with this API deployed, we can grab the URL and then attach that to Postman. So you can see that this is our production API. We can select post down here and then copy this URL. And then if we go back to Postman, there we go. And we put this URL in there. We do a post request and we give it a body. We'll switch the text to application JSON. And we'll say body success. What should happen here is that we should get back a response if we do this correctly. Okay, so it got back, uh, not sure what you want. So let's go ahead and look at the logs to see what happened in this request. So we'll go back to create user. We can see a new timestamp of 1356, which makes sense. And we can see that it came in with key one that was in the last request. So let's. This came back with body key one success. So instead of that, let's go ahead and uh, switch back to Postman. And we're going to basically do no, no body section here, because that's already implied. And we'll do key one success. And then there we go. We get back status 200. Let's change it to error. There we go, 500. And then finally, let's change it to something that it doesn't know. And we get XYZ, or we get uh, 400, not sure what you want. So this is really important to understand what we just did. So we created a Lambda function. This is our backend server. We have our monitoring for basically seeing what happens on the backend server. We have API Gateway, which allows us to route requests from the front end to our backend Lambda function. And then we have this tool called Postman to test that deployed API, which then goes to the Lambda function. And if anything happens, then we can go into CloudWatch. We can view one of the events and see details about why it's failing.
this is like we're pretty much hitting we're hitting a lot of stuff right here in this just like this this small video um, so hopefully you see the importance of this uh, in the next video we're going to cover another aws service so i'll see you there